Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, good evening, my dear sisters. And welcome to this special edition. It's a special edition because this is a topic that I've never actually thought I would be doing, at least not so soon. Uh, but I just realized that it is a very, very important one and a very, very a timely one. So today I'm so excited that we're going to be talking about menopause. Yes, we're going to be talking about menopause and to assist us with this talk, I have a lovely, a beautiful sister who will be, you know, giving us, talking to us from her experience. She is, she, she, she told me herself that she is an expert by experience. Amina is here with us today, and she's uh, a powerful woman. She's a, a, a book publisher. She's currently working on her PhD. She's a leader. She calls herself the perfectly imperfect leader. She wears so many hats, but today she's just here as an expert by experience to share with us what she has gotten to know and experience from menopause, from her own experience, and of course, from some of the research that she has done because she is a researcher, like I told you, she's currently working on her PhD. I want to take some time to just welcome our sisters who are already here with us. Um, teacher Higgins, thank you. You came in already about five minutes ago. I'm so, so happy that you're here. Sister Rebecca, good evening. Yes, you're welcome. We are looking forward to learn. I'm also very excited and looking forward to learn. So before I bring our speaker in i just want to encourage you to share the link again just take a moment to share the link again share in your various groups share on social media share with your your aunt your mom your sister whoever your uncle your aunties because this show is not just for women it's for men there's a reason why it is called men or pause and not women or pause right so it's for men and it's for women it's for young and old it's for everybody Okay, so God bless you all. And uh, like I said, I'm so, so happy to have you here with me today. Without wasting much time, I think I will just bring our speaker in so that we get this party started. So ladies and gentlemen, I know it's only ladies for now, but gentlemen will be coming very soon. So welcome with me, the amazing Amina. Hello, Amina. Hello, Laura, and hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining in. <laughs> Amina, you're welcome. I'm so happy that you took this time. It's a little bit late. Like we said, um, you know, in the back, in the back background, it's not easy getting ready on a Sunday evening when we should be preparing to go to bed, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. And I'm, I think our viewers I'm also very happy that you took the time and made the sacrifice to come and be with us. Thank you so much, Amina. Thank you, Laura. It's, it, is a, it is a pleasure to be here. And also, I know we talked about this in private and, we, and in the past, and I also did not expect that I'll be talking to everybody about it, about the experience, about what I know. But uh, I'm very glad to be here. And this is sort of like a little bit outside of my area of professional expertise. But as a mother, as a woman, as a sister, this is something that I think is very important for us to talk about. So thank you for inviting me. Oh, Amina, you know, one thing I know about you, I've known you now since 2017. And one thing I know about you is that you're very generous. You are oh, a very generous you. person. You're generous with your time. You're generous with your resources. You're generous with your knowledge. You're generous with just everything. So God would really, really bless you for that. We are so, so glad that we have people like that in our community who are always ready at any time, morning, night, afternoon, to come out and do whatever they can do to be of help to others. We really appreciate Amina. Thank you. I learn more. I share because I learn more. As I share, I learn as well. So, you know, it's reciprocal. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we want to welcome also Malaika Glory. She too was one of those who was waiting before Malaika. You are very, very welcome. And just go ahead and share this link 
with some more people so that more people will come here. Sylvie, you're also welcome. So before we get to, to, to give you a chance to, to, to introduce yourself, Amina, I think we should just start with a short prayer. I'm going to, I'm just going to lead us in a short prayer. And at the end of the show, you will close the show with a short prayer as well. So let us begin. Yeah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God, our Father, eternal King, we are so thankful, Lord, for the gift of life. We are so thankful, Lord, that we are healthy, that we are strong, oh, Father, that you've given us the voice to speak, you've given us eyes to see, you've given us ears to hear, and you've given us all these talents, oh, Father, that we can come out and share and be an inspiration to others. Father, I thank you for this um, opportunity that you've given us again this evening, Father, to learn, to share with one another, to share our experiences, and to inspire and to make our world, the world around us, a little bit better. I want to thank you so much for my sister Amina, who, who accepted to come and grace the stage this evening to, 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 to give of herself to us. I thank you for all my sisters also who are in the audience, who are listening, who are watching, oh Father. I just want to invite the Holy Spirit to come and be with us right now, to come and inspire us, put the right questions in my mouth, put the right answers in Amina's mouth, and also put the right comments in the hands of our, our, our audience so that this show is going to be a very, very um, interesting one and it's going to be a very, very life transforming one. Mighty Father, we bless your holy name and we thank you, Father, that you're always there with us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed in thanksgiving. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. So let's just go to it. Amina, can you just give us just a brief introduction about yourself before we get into the topic? Okay. So my name is Amina Chitembo and I am a Zambian based in the UK. I have been in the UK for pretty much 20 years now. And I am a mother of four, and I do have a husband. <laughs> the four are daughters. Some of those are grown up. So I have a 28 year old, 20 years old, and then I have a nine and a seven year old. So I've got across, I call myself, I've got them across the decades. Um, in my day-to-day -day life, I am a lecturer at a university and I'm also doing a PhD in leadership and organizational development. Um, I also help people to write books and I have written some books myself. So together with the books and the teaching and everything, my area of interest is a lot around leadership and migrants so anything to do with migrants because i want to see more people within this the diaspora where we are to be better to do whatever they want to do because sometimes it can be very difficult to do that so today i am here specifically at the request of laura as a woman as a mother as i said earlier to talk about this topic i am nearly 50 soon and because of that, I am the woman of a certain age, as usually people say, because they, want, they don't want to mention the word uh, menopause. I haven't menopause yet. I am in perimenopause, so I'll talk about that later, the difference in terms of what that means. So there you go. That's me. Thank you so much, Amina. You've just, you've just uh, calmed me down on one of my questions because I was going to ask you, so, because sometimes when, when we talk, you talk about menopause and then you talk about perimenopausal. So I was getting confused, like, hey, what's the difference? You know, but you say you're going to talk about that later. So we are patient and we're going to learn. So let's just get into it. <laughs> when I asked you, how should we call this talk? You answered me that um, we should say menopause, why we should talk about it. So I just want to ask you, why is it important to talk about menopause? Because I think a lot of women suffer in silence and it doesn't matter what your, what your religion is, where you are in the world, what your educational background is or who you are. As long as you are a woman, this is a natural process that women have to go through but it's one that you don't hear much about. You hear a lot about puberty, you hear a lot about all the you know, childbearing and things like that. 
but this is the next stage from there and people don't really talk about it until recently in the uk we are talking about it a little bit more now and some companies are starting to take notice but generally it's a journey that a lot of women experience on their own and sometimes they're very shocked about what's happening to them because they fail to recognize themselves sometimes wow you know now that you say about now that you talk uh, say this i i realize that it's so true because when you even watch tv and you see all these talk shows there are there will be times that are dedicated to puberty there are talks dedicated to to marriage there are talks dedicated to childbearing and all these things motherhood but hardly do you hear the mention um menopause and things like that so i think that this is the start we this generation all of us this women here today we need to break that silence we need to start talking about it because um like sylvie said in the comments she said i need to know all these things before time that's why she's here today it's important that we know these things before time so that like 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 you said amina sometimes women go through this and they are just shocked because they don't even know what is happening to their bodies. They don't even understand what is happening to them. So I'm really, really happy that you're here today, Amina. All right, so I just want to, to go to the next comment. You know, you said that um, it's a natural process and it doesn't matter where you come from, where you live, what religion, um, it, every woman goes through it. But I think that like with every other thing, like maybe childbirth, puberty and all the like, the experience is never the same for every woman. True or false? Yeah, yes. that is very true. That is very true. That's why when people ask the question, you know, even if you just put in Google, for instance, I just put in Google, how long does menopause last? If that question is like, how long is a piece of string? As we say, because every woman is different every woman experiences it there is an average that they say but the experience the length of time and even the side effects that people get are very different there are some generic ones that we can talk about but more in most cases it will hit a woman at a certain age they say According to research, they say the mean age is around 45 to 65 in terms of the women when it, when it starts. But some women start earlier and some women start later. But there are also some women that actually don't even know that they are in perimenopausal, which is what I'll talk about now because I think to set the scene, it's the difference between what is menopause and what is perimenopausal. So as you... Just, just a minute before you continue... I'm seeing some comments here. Rebecca says, um, Amina has an echo. I, I can't hear it, uh, Rebecca. All right. Yeah. Um, does anyone else hear it? Can you just write in the comments? Amina, are you, are you, do you have two gadgets? Are you locked on on two, please? No, I'm, no? I'm not. And this is the one I use for meetings as well. The only thing I can try and do is to use headphones. Okay, let's just try it out, let's see. Is it okay for me to do that? We are live, so when you're live, things happen while you're... <laughs> yeah, things happen, that's, that's a live show. That's a live show, just try it and let's see. Just let's see things. what's gonna happen. So yeah, thanks for the confirmation. So Amina will try to put on her headset now and let's see. Um, I guess it's going to, it's going to help. Okay, so okay. how's that? So how is that? How is that? Tutu, Rebecca? Oh, it's Tutu here, well. here as well. Yes, Tutu is here. Let me just take the time to welcome them. Woyan is here. Woyan, you're welcome. Tutu, you're welcome. Darling girl, you're welcome. Wow, Rebecca was here before. You're all welcome. Thank you so much. So um, Amina has the headset now. So just go on, Amina. I think it should be fine now. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. All right. So, so, yeah, so I was just explaining in terms of the difference uh, between the perimenopausal stage and also the menopause. Is that okay? Let's say it's still, it's still echoing. So I don't know how bad it is, but I think we can, we will just have to, uh, 
to cope with it. Maybe that's a preparation for menopause. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to say because I have you know, no idea what's happening. No idea what's happening. Uh, what we'll do is just is that when when you're not speaking, Amina, you just mute yourself and let's just be patient, dear sisters. And uh, so long as you can hear her, let us just manage this. Okay, I'm really we're really sorry about that. Thank you so much. I actually much. haven't had this because I use the same recording from my university to teach so i haven't had that before so i don't know what's happening today no just go on it's okay it's fine now rebecca says it's fine everyone says it's not too bad so let's go let's go <laughs> so keep right going on, Thank you. okay fine where was i i was ex trying to look at to talk about the difference so the perimenopausal you as you grow older your hormones start changing and especially the estrogen in your body starts reducing. And as that starts reducing, you start having lots of different um, issues with your body. So you start having things like hot flushes. Like now, if you see my, my, my face just suddenly go very shiny, maybe I'm having a hot flush. You start having uh, difficulties in mood. There are a lot of... Uh, symptoms that I can't really go into a lot, but I would urge you to just try and look at it on Google and see how many different things and try to see, you may have some of those and you may not have. And one of the major ones as well is weight gain, because as you go, your body starts changing, you maybe your mood starts being low, you start getting anxiety, depression and things like that. And sometimes your skin just gets very dry as well. So there are quite a few symptoms which are very, which can be very unpleasant. All those things are there through the menopause, the perimenopausal period. And this period can go from, you know, from what I've seen on the NHS website, the National Health Service website here in the UK, is that can go from months to years. It just depends. And then the menopause itself, it's actually the period when you you have your last period and then you don't have a continuous period for 12 months. Then at least we know that you are, you are now in menopause. So that you don't need to go and buy things anymore to whatever. You can save some money. At least something good, huh? Yes, at the, at the end of it, something good. Yeah, so that uh, yeah. Uh, that's those are the two differences in terms of the terms perimenopausal and menopausal. Okay, thank you so much. So someone now says, I think the first headset was much better with the echo. Oh my god! <laughs> so should she remove the headset? Ah, my god, my goodness. I mean, uh, so just remove it so that you have a fresh. Your ears are free. Yeah, I think that's much better. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. So these are signs and characteristics that might be a hint to us that we're getting into menopause. I'm just going to ask you maybe one of those silly questions because there's no, I don't think there's any direct answer, but what is the age range? When does, when generally should a woman expect to start, you know, seeing some of those signs and getting into it, Amina? She's muted. Amina, you're muted. Me. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't mute myself. <laughs> I think yeah, when, I, when I took out the headphone. It was the headphone, yes. Okay, so you've got my question. Can you just answer, please? All right. So as I said, um, different websites will tell you different age ranges. But if I go with, uh, like, the National Health Service here, uh, it says between 45 to 65 on average in terms of you can start at any period with that however i would like to add to that a lot of people uh can start much earlier than that i did work with somebody who started at 27 so and also there are other factors including things like maybe people who have hysterectomies and things like that that can kick in as well. You can go into menopause just by having those operations because your hormones are disturbed in your body. Wow. Thank you so much. So there is actually 
no range. You can sell as early as 30 something or as late as 60 something, isn't it? So we just need to be to be vigilant and take those signs seriously, right? When we notice them and you think, oh, something is not right here, we take it seriously, maybe we see the doctor and things like that. So we got an interesting comment here. I mean, I want to read it to you. That's the one I'm laughing at. <laughs> Yeah, she says I'm not greedy. She's not been eating all the food. It's no. the menopause that's causing the weight gain. You and me both, Tutu. You and me both. You see, yeah, yeah. So what I was, the other thing to take note of is there is obviously Laura the time when it starts, but also it's how long you get the symptoms for. That's also different for every woman. So for some people, they say maybe just a few months and it's done. Other people, it goes for years and years and years. Yeah. I remember when we were talking um, two days ago, you told me about a lady who was uh, kind of bragging that, oh, she had that just for two weeks, you know. Yes. And, oh, lucky her, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that was her experience and she didn't have any issues. It could have been that she put, she was in perimenopausal for some time, but because she didn't have the bad side effects, it wasn't consequential to her. But I also know of a lot of women that have ended up losing their work because sometimes it can be very difficult to work. Sometimes it can it's relationships, it can affect relationships. So there are a lot of things that go on. Very good. So you just introduced me to my next <laughs> into my next question. So with all of this, you know, hot flashes, maybe at times when you're not ready for it, mood swings and weight gain and stuff like that. So how does menopause or perimenopause, how can it affect your life and relationships? What are some of the, uh, you know, problems that can ensure for it from it? And let us take it a bit um, st uh, structurally. We start with the personal life. How can it affect you as a person, as an individual? Well, <laughs> It, again, it depends on who you are, but from experience, um, I'll just, from now, I'll just sort of like give an, a, a disclaimer that I belong to two groups, on, they're private groups on Facebook that anybody can search, and they are around other women around the world who are experiencing menopause, whether they are thriving or they are sinking, and they... You know, sometimes we make a joke out of it, but the symptoms are quite, can be quite serious in terms of how it affects your life. So, for instance, the mood changes. Those, that is one big one. That you don't know what's happening to you. And sometimes it's not like you can control a lot of what's, what's, come, what's hitting you. So, obviously, as people would say, cheer up, just cheer up. It's not as easy as cheering up. It's not as easy as this is not this is not happening. You have low mood, you have um, difficulties. Then when we talk about things like the hot flashes themselves, you work in an office and it's winter and everybody has got all the heating on and you are having hot flashes, you want to be cold. <laughs> that can have a difficult uh, impact on you. When you sleep at night, you get, you know, like hot legs, hot feet. You don't want to cover when other people want to cover themselves. All that has an impact. But on a day-to-day -day basis, as, as a woman yourself, if I speak to my own experience, sometimes I actually, you actually feel so bad that why am I feeling this? Why am I being like this? to a point where you start being conscious about feeling low, then you start avoiding being around other people. So it can lead to reclusion, it can lead to you just being totally paranoid and you just being anxious all the time. Wow. Because you don't, it just does affect your body that way. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much, Amina. So there are three important questions here, which I think we should look at before we continue. So, uh, Woyen wants to know, is perimenopause progressive or can perimenopause regress and then restart? Uh, as you know, is it Mami Sean? Is it Mami Sean? That's, uh, yes. Mami hi, Mami Sean. Yes. 
from what I know, I'm not obviously I'm not a medical expert here. As I say, I'm speaking as an expert by experience from what I have experienced and what other people that I know uh, experience. I, I haven't heard of regression of it because it's your body. It's the natural progression of your body. It's like when you start puberty, you don't start puberty and then go back and then start again. It starts and then it carries on. However, what people may have is some people manage it better than others. So there are things that they say you can do to help yourselves. And you could be, it could be that maybe you're a very active person and you just fight through it. You don't notice some of the symptoms and they're not as bad for you. So you might think it's gone or whatever, but it does stay. As I said, irregular periods and moods and, and things will carry on over time until you get to a point of uh, menopause itself, then the bleeding stops. Wow. All right. Thank you so much, Mami Sean. I hope that um, clarifies a little bit. Now we go to the next question, which I think you already touched on, but let's just look at the question and you, maybe you can add something. So Rebecca wants to know, is isolation and no interest to interact part of the perimenopausal? Per uh, the, the, the whole period, because your, your happy hormones are affected. So you get the more, the, the low mood and the mood swings. <clears throat> By mood swings, I say sometimes you just feel angry and you don't know why you are angry. So for you, so the natural thing to do, what I've seen through myself and other, other women that are going through this is you tend to avoid those situations where you're going to be seen as being uh, the difficult woman, the crazy woman, the whatever woman. So you just pull away from other people and you isolate yourself so that you feel like, and sometimes you just feel like you just don't want to talk, you know. I won't even go very far. Like this morning, I, at some point I was thinking, am I even going to manage to do this talk? Because from nowhere, you just sit there and you're just sitting down and you've got no energy. That's the other thing as well. Low energy, uh, you get brain fog. So, you know, they talk about baby brains when you're pregnant and whatever, and you have a baby. In menopause as well, you get brain fog and things like that. So all those are issues that you can have. And the fact that if you're not happy in your body, a lot of times when, you, when you're not feeling happy, you don't feel like being around other people. So it's pro, pro, probably, I would say, a consequence of what is happening as opposed to it causing it. It's the consequence of whatever else is happening around it, whatever the symptoms you're having. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. And Rebecca has another question. Does one also get super sensitive? Extremely, yeah. 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 <laughs> super, super sensitive in a way. You know, this is in the UK after nine is after watershed. And so adults can talk about things. So super sensitive and irritable is one of the biggest things that you get as well. And that goes with things like sometimes it does affect your sex drive. If you are in a relationship, sometimes you don't want to be talked to. You don't want to be talked, and your partner doesn't also know what's happening to you. So, <laughs> thank you. We're going to come come back to that. So, Mirabel Simulu, she wants to know what are the chances of pregnancy during perimenopause. Funny enough, I was just reading about that uh, after we talked, Laura, when I was looking at some of the other things, some of the questions. And the answer is there is a possibility, yes, you can, because all you're doing is your body is releasing less eggs. It's not stopped releasing the eggs yet. So you could get pregnant. Okay. Mirabel, I hope that is uh, satisfying. <laughs> That's in, in perimenopause. Once you get to menopause, then now you're free. But oh my god. <laughs> okay, I think. We, 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 we are not just praying not we are not just praying that we should be able to handle the perimenopause we are also praying not to get pregnant pregnant woman that would be whew. that's a good combination isn't it so um, there's another question from Malaika let me read it it's already on the screen Malaika says been there bleeding like a horse. Yes. <laughs> I'm nodding to her point because I'm reading what she says there and I'm saying yes. 
dry membranes, yeah. even the yoni the yoni dries out, hot flashes, crying like a baby. Yeah. Being on yeah. top of the world in the next second, but it's oh my god, it's managing. Yes. So, so when I said the mood that? swings, that's exactly. I think she's put it very well. Malika, you've you've put it very well there because it's one minute you're very happy, the next minute you you don't know what hits you. And yes, the the dryness is there. Yes. Oh my God! So she also and also there's also there's also a you know the, there's body odor that you have if you don't bath yes, but sometimes during perimenopause it comes up with no reason so you can wash twenty times and it just depends on who you are not everybody has that but I know that's a common in the group that's a common side effect that people talk about. So on top of all this, we need a good perfume. <laughs> it might not go through. <laughs> well, if I if I can say the way she said it, it's more in your yoni than than armpits, really. So the armpits, the sweating, yes, you can manage that. Oh my god! Oh my god! All right. So let us leave it at this. Thank you so much. This has been a real, very very active conversation. I love it when. You know, we can come in, bring in our comments, bring in our questions so that we go out of the live show having, you know, having been touched, you know, personally. <laughs> it's really wonderful. So please keep the comments coming, keep the questions coming and keep on sharing. If you know someone who you think would enjoy this show, funny enough, they have not seen any men so far, but it's okay. You can in, keep on. They're watching them. private. Don't they're worry. They're watching, watching private. private. They're watching in their rooms. I know. All right. So let us continue. So that's the personal life. What about marriage and relationships? You've touched on it already, but maybe you can just give us a little more. How does being in perimenopause affect, how can it affect your relationships, your marriage and, and things like that? Who wants to be, a, who wants to be with a sulky woman? That's the question I would ask. Who wants to be with somebody that changes their mood just like that? So other things, you know, there's, there's a lot here. The onus that is put on us as women because our bodies are changing. There's very little, if anything, you know, they suggest there's things that you can do to help you, but there's very little in terms of how much you can control what's happening to you. But what I see and what I think is relationships are about communication. Men go through their own midlife crisis and whatever is happening. We don't know how biological that is or whatever. But we go through this period that is not something that we choose. I think the most important that we can have is about conversation and being able to speak up to say, this is what's happening to me. Go and see your doctor, go and see uh, a professional. And if you have an and I think there was a comment I think it was Malika again who said about having a good doctor yes. that will help you because that's where you understand because sometimes you can think it's perimenopause but it could be something else so don't just assume that if, because all these effects that you have can happen in other conditions so you don't just say I am in perimenopause you need to go to the doctor they need to you know confirm that there are tests that can be done that will help you, to, that will help them to see that your body is changing and your hormones are reducing and things like that. Once that is confirmed, then the next thing is it has an, a bad effect. First and foremost, because it's not, it doesn't hit you in a day, it might even take a long time for you to realize what is happening to you. And that's where one of the biggest problems could be because you are thinking everybody else is the one that's going crazy around you when actually <laughs> it's your body that is changing and they are looking at you and thinking you have changed what's going on with you and so the, that is the time when probably there would be a lot of conflict in relationships and this is not just relationships with your partner because we go through this stage when we are probably having teenagers when we are having children that are not tiny who will not understand when they come and sit on your lap and you find that you struggle with your grown-up children as well because they're not understanding you you are not understanding them and so it just affects a lot of relationships and also with friends 
Wow. Wow. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> so let me just read some of the comments and questions that have come up here. Um, I like Malika. You should have had her on the panel as well because she's, she knows a lot as well. She, so. she does. Next time, you're coming for part two, so we'll get her on with us. And she says, uh, uh, Darling Girl says, oh my God, women in problems. I know, right? We've just come up giving birth to children and now this. Like, seriously? How much can we take, huh? Oh, I, ca I call it the joy of being a woman. <laughs> so... Malaika also says you need a lovely Yoni steam bath and lots of sisterhood. Yes. And I think um I think that's one of your questions. That. Yes, we need that. We need that sisterhood. Part of the coping strategies. Amina also talked about the support groups on Facebook. And those groups are really amazing. I'm sure she's going to, to touch on that again later on. We'll come to that. Rebecca says, Oh, really? Laura, the perfume doesn't help. Mm. <laughs> yes. Good to know. <laughs> and I'd like to also confirm that. And Rebecca was asking um, Amina, how should one manage her marriage in this situation? Talk to your partner. And different partners are different. But sometimes I think we take it for granted that men will not understand if we tell them what is going, what we're going through. But I think if your partner loves you, loves you enough, and I know they do they will understand and probably give you a little bit of space but don't don't take the whole yeah because there is a thin line as we know between somebody understanding what they are not going through what you are going through and especially that this topic menopause doesn't get talked about much they might not understand the how big the impact it is on your life yeah, with pregnancy, a lot of men know about pregnancy, so they will look after you, they'll support you, they will help you, and as they see you getting heavier, they'll help you tie your shoelaces and things like that. But with this one, because it's not such an internal problem, it's such personal, and it's very, until you tell somebody what you're going through, they might not understand. And first, some people might even argue and say, I'm just making it up. But it's, a, it's about the communication that you have. I'm not sure about the, the dry yoni one, what you do, look, you can't know that. But in terms of communication, 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 I think that's, that, that's the way forward. But also, Laura, I don't know whether this question is going to come up, but let me just touch on the fact that, we, especially here in the West, we have medications that your doctor can prescribe to help you to reduce some of those symptoms. Because I remember there was a time when I <laughs> when I told my, my, my doctor, I said, you don't know what you've done. I nearly killed my husband. <laughs> because I was having such a bad time. I was suffering in silence, so to say. And then I went for a cervical smear, which is one thing we have. You go every year or every other year for the cervical screen to just check for cancer and stuff like that. And the nurse that was doing that, uh, we started talking because we are about the same age, I think. So we started talking about the effects. Then I started talking about what I was feeling, how my body was changing, and how I, I didn't know myself anymore, how I didn't want to go out. And then I'm gaining weight. Um, by gaining weight, I'm eating. So there's no way about it. There's the hormonal side and then what forces you to sort of like seek comfort in food. And then she said to me, she said, all the things that you've talked about, have you talked to your daughter about them? She said, well, no, because they've been going on for some time and I'm just getting tired. Because you get tired of talking about it. You get tired of feeling it. And then you get tired of, you, don't, you just don't think there's no way this can can go away and the other thing is i was getting a lot of headaches as well because i have um hemiplegic migraines which is a migraine that touches your head and half of your body so the whole of the left side sometimes you can feel like you're going numb on one side because of that that was getting a lot uh, more frequent than before and when she sent me to go and talk to my doctor and i did and the doctor just said, oh, okay, because you have the, the hemiplegic migraine, you can't go on the hormone replace, uh, replacement therapy because that could lead you to having a stroke. 
but there is another drug that I can give you. It's an old drug that they used to give for people with depression, but you get a very low dose of it. I won't say the name because I'm not prescribing it to other women. Uh, so I'll just say that drug, but if you speak to your daughter, they may be able to help you. Yeah, so he gave me this medication and I, he told me I was going to be really tired for a week or so. And I was really tired, I slept. And then when I woke up, I was calm. <laughs> I didn't even recognize myself again from being this other person to feeling way calmer than I had been feeling for over a year or something like that, even probably more. So that I take that medication and it helps me a lot in terms of even just managing because, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, I am a mother, I am a wife, I'm doing a PhD, I work, I run a business. And in addition to that, like I'm like a crazy woman, I decided to do another master's level degree while I'm doing my PhD. So, <laughs> so I got to a point where I couldn't manage any of those. <laughs> so, but after he gave me that medication, it started helping me to actually feel calmer. And also it made me realize some of the things that I hadn't noticed were happening to me that were unusual. Remember the beginning I talked about where you think everybody else is crazy, but actually you're the one that's, <laughs> you're not crazy, but you're the one that's having these effects. And I was having those effects. And it's only after I started taking my medication that I felt a bit more like the, the me before the whole perimenopausal stuff started happening. So, <laughs> so yeah, there, there, is, there is help out there. There is help out there. There is help out there, and like your the nurse said to you, don't just sit there and suffer. Talk yeah. to the doctor. So if you're going through any of this, and whenever the time comes for us, and you notice these things, don't just sit there and and suffer. You know, talk to someone, talk to your doctor, because there are and, and th th there is no <laughs> medication that will take away all the symptoms, right? You will still have to go through those things. You might still have to, you know, wipe your face. Like I mean, I do right now. But, but, I should have brought my powder to just because I can see myself putting away. Yeah, but um, th there is help. So thank you so much, Amina. I, I really, really appreciate. And um, and uh, let me just go through some of the comments again. Darling girl said the men really need to watch so they understand us. Yes. So after this show, just go ahead and share, forward this link to your husbands, to your brothers, to the men in your life, because I think there is. A lot of ignorance concerning this and lots of relationships marriages are breaking at this yes. age because of this and they don't even know we don't even know what is really going on right so let us really um let us really share um so rebecca says what headaches too ah yeah headaches too can you imagine Mirabella <laughs> says, homework for all the ladies Bring your husband with you during part two. <laughs> that is a deal, Mirabella. I like that. I like that. During part two, bring your husbands with you because this is it will save some some relationships. It will save some some marriages. Now, Rebecca asked another question. After that, we'll continue with the show. Rebecca says, "So, what do I tell him? I mean, my gynecologist. I once told him that, and he just laughed and told me that I worry a lot." Amina? Um, be serious, because he can't just laugh at you. <laughs> be serious. Tell him that this is not a joke. It might be a joke for you, but it's not a joke for me. And maybe mention to say, if he can't help you, if it's a he, if he can't help you, let him refer you to another doctor that will be willing to listen to you. Because this is not a joke. This is not something that you are making up. And this is something that your life depends on this because you need to be, as women, I don't know about, um, I think this is common for a lot of women where in the, in the home, when you, the woman, is not happy or you're not well, everybody else looks like they're ill as well. So you're not just carrying, you don't just have the burden for yourself, but it's for your family as well. When mommy is happy, everybody is happy. When mommy is not happy, Everybody's not happy in the house. And if you are going through and it's affecting your life, you know, Laura, you mentioned relationships ending. 
people have have got they've left their jobs women have left their jobs because you just can't cope especially if you're in a high pressure job just um last week within last week here on the on the bbc one of the bbc presenters the bbc news presenters did a little project where she was talking about her menopause wars if i can call them that so she talk, she has to talk to the director because in the studio it gets very hot and she with all the cameras and all the lighting that's in the studio so she had to talk to employers eventually to say this is what i'm going through i can't function if it's so hot in the in the place so what they did for her is they have worked out a way of reducing the temperature for her so that they know that when she's on duty they call it the louise temperature because that's her name they call it the louise temperature now that might seem like a joke or you know it might be seem like oh, it's just a small thing but for her that has made her life so much easier then she talked to a woman that works in the fire service and i want you to just imagine the fire service uniform the the big uniform that they'll come uh, come wearing when there's a fire somewhere the, the original one that they were wearing in the UK was, it brings in the heat. It's very hot, it's very heavy because it's meant to protect you from the fire that's on the outside. But what then happens to a woman that's going through menopause is that's extra heat that you won't function with. So this woman said in her service where she works, the, ambulance, the, the fire service that she works, they have started looking at policies where they have to support women that are going through that period now like with anything else disability or anything else if you don't if it's not vis visible it's up to you the woman to start talking about it bang on as many doors as you can because the more of us who go out there and talk about what we are going through the more people will start listening and the more we'll get the help so don't expect people to understand that to, to, to see you and think this is what you're going through. You need to be able to talk about it. You need to be able to tell people what you're going through. So your, your symptoms might not be very bad, and that might be good. But if your symptoms are very bad and they're affecting your work, rather than taking the easy route of leaving the job and then you end up on welfare because you can't afford to look after yourself, talk to your managers about it. Talk to your union about it. Talk to whoever can listen to you so that they can at least make just little adjust, adjustments that can make your, work, your, your life a little bit better. You're not asking for special treatment. You are asking to be able to manage at the same level as everybody else who's in the organization. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amina. And thank you all, Rebecca. Malaike for all your comments because they are really making the show very, very interesting and very, very educative. Um, uh, Honoring, you're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, Malaike, I just want to say that on the next show, you need to come here and tell us more. Maybe you'll bring a yoni bath with you so that we all know what a yoni bath is. Solutions. So if there are solutions, like it seems like Malaika has some solutions, that would be good. You, you and you join Amina and we talk and look at some of those coping strategies because Amina, you are right. One hour is not going to be enough to go through this because we, we will not even have time for our coping strategies and all. So my next question was going to be about the work situation, but you've already answered that, you know, you've already answered that. Um, no matter how it affects your work, don't just suffer there. Leaving your job is not a solution because you will eventually have to go to another job and you're carrying those symptoms along. It's not like you leave the job and leave the symptoms there. You will carry them along. So it's it's rather, it's better you talk. And um, people are always ready to listen and, and find a way. But when you start, you know, behaving in a strange way and nobody knows what, you're, you're, what is happening, then it makes it difficult. Amina. Yes. There are two sentences you make in our last few conversations, which I took note of. The first sentence you made was that, and I think after you've talked with us now, we can understand that statement. Because when you said it, I didn't really, I didn't, I couldn't really get my head around it. You said, at that stage, you feel like someone else has come 
to live in your body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, Pretty that, much. That, because that is terrible. And you have carried that's yourself that's up to this stage, and then suddenly you don't recognize yourself because all these things are happening. You know, I remember once saying, I don't even know why I get, I'm getting so angry because when I look around me, there's nothing that is wrong. My life is good, my family is healthy, my work is good, but still there's just this thing that keeps going and you're just thinking, what is happening with me? So it's like somebody else has come to live in my body. I'm not there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> the jovial, yeah. outgoing me is not there anymore. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is, this is a lot to take. A lot to kind of try to understand, but I think um, there is no way you can really prepare for, for it, right? Mentally, you can always say, oh, I have an idea, but when the time comes, we, are just have, we just have to go through it like our mothers and our grandmothers went through it ahead of us, right? Yes. Um, but I think with the education that we have, getting a chance to talk with experienced experts like Amina, and Malaike. <laughs> Expert by experience, because you know yourself best. Yes. I know myself. Every every woman is an expert by experience in whether it's pregnancy, whether it's, you know, even when you talk about periods and things like that, it affects people differently. Some people have endometriosis, which is very, very painful. Other people don't have that. So you are the only one that understands your body better than anybody else that's out there so let nobody tell you that you're going crazy or you don't you don't understand what's happening when actually you are the experience you are the expert with your experience and all you need is somebody that can help you to so to to go on the other side yes wonderful so that was the first statement you made the second statement you made was um, I think we, we exchanged some, some text messages and then you told me there was a lot of things you had to do. You talked about deadlines to meet and stuff like that. And then I wrote something and I said, no stress. And then you <laughs> and said, how can you tell a perimenopausal lady no stress? It doesn't I said, how can you say to a perimenopausal woman no stress? Yeah. Because stress is part of you now. Stress is part of you. Stress is part of you. And, um, you know, it just reminded me of our Women's Summit, which is coming up on Saturday, on this coming Saturday. Um, there, are, there is the stress that comes maybe with the, with the perimenopause, which might be difficult to manage. But before that, there is the stress, which most of us are experiencing right now, which we can do something about, which we can easily manage with some, you know, tactics, coping strategies, mindset changes and stuff like that. So I just want to take this chance now to invite all of us here. Most of you in the chat have already registered, but maybe, you know, there are some who have not yet done so. We have the Online Women's Summit on Saturday, J July 10th, that's next, coming Saturday at 6 p.m. German time, it's just two hours, 6 p.m. German time, 5 p.m. UK, Cameroon, I think. Um, so please just register. It's a free event. The link is on Eventbrite. I'm going to drop it here in the comment section and in the information box. So just register, grab your free, free tickets. Let us just learn some of those coping strategies, which will definitely also help us as we gradually get into the stage, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so I think yeah, I think just just to add on to that, Laura, I've talked a lot because obviously as you say, there will be part two. Maybe the, the part two will, get, will focus on the coping strategies yes, because exactly. with all this, I you know, I joke that you know, how do you say that to a, uh, to a stress to a menopausal woman, but there are things that can help you to be able to deal with the stress that you're having. You know, for instance, for me, it's taking walks with my headphones and listening to, I don't listen to music a lot, but I listen to audio books because I'm a, I'm a, you know, reading freak, leadership freak, whatever. I've got this audible on my phone, which I'll just go out sometimes and say, I'll take a walk. And then I go and walk in nature. And that helps me a lot. There are a lot of other things in terms of exercise. They talk about exercise a lot. I should be the one that should start exercising because at the moment with the COVID, I haven't. <laughs> so sometimes they talk about the food that you eat. 
I saw all those things. There are things that we can research about. And maybe when we have a conversation next time, Laura, it might be a little bit more people we invite more women that may be going through it so that we can share the little tidbits that we can share that we have gone through. Yes. So at this stage, I just want to also mention that if you come to watch this, if you watch this show, whenever you're going to watch it and you're going through this, um, you know, maybe you can relate to some of the things. I mean, I say, Malaika, I'm going to contact you already for the yes. next show. And when who, any other person, you can just get in touch with me or you can just write something in the comment box and I'll look for you so that in the next show, we'll have maybe about three or four other women together with Amina and we have another more lively um, and educative conversation. And there's a very important, there's a very important uh, message on the screen here from, is it Honari? Yes, I wanted to read it to you, yes. Yes, because that's very important. There is help. There's anti low dose antidepressants. So the medication that I'm, I'm on is a very low dose, old type of an antidepressant, yes. which I had to go in very slowly because of, if you take it as an antidepressant, it has a really bad side effects, but that has helped. And there's a lot more that you can be given to support you as you go through the journey to make it easier. It, it doesn't stop the perimenopause. It reduces the symptoms. Yes. So, um, Honorine, welcome again. She said, great speaker too. It's okay for women to seek for medical help. You know, women, we always have this tendency of trying to get everything under control, right? We're not, <laughs> we, we are not, we are not super... It's weak. all right to be vulnerable. Yeah, we, it's all right to be vulnerable. It's all right to say, hey, I can't. I can't take it anymore. It's all right to seek... It's all right to be vulnerable. Yes, in practice, we um, Honorine says she has talked to many women, and HRT and mild antidepressants has helped a lot of women. Thank you so much, Honorine, for this. Rebecca says, I'll book an appointment with her gynecologist tomorrow, and if he keeps laughing at her, then she will. Laura, there's something that's happening with the recording, it's just gone, it's repeating everything you're saying. Really. Okay, can you mute yourself while I read the comments? Let's see. Okay. All right. I think it's fine now. So Rebecca says, I'll book an appointment with my gynecologist tomorrow. And if there is no change, I will look for another doctor. That's very good. And um, Malaika says, our moms unfortunately never talk to us about sexuality, menopause, and stuff like that. That is true. Um, I think that they also, you know, you cannot give what you don't have, right? You, you can only give what you have. Their moms also did not prepare them. That, that was, that is not our, that was not the norm at the time. But I think that with our generation, we can change. We can start changing things by educating our daughters, telling them about these things so that by the time the second generation comes after us, it will be normal and will not have to be making statements like my mom never talked to me about these things again. So let us be the ones who will stand up and say, enough with this. We are now going to be talking about these things and we're going to make them normal because they, it's really important to talk about that. Oh, finally, we have a man. Finally, we have a man. <laughs> just in time and who else is that mr portinzo you're so welcome <laughs> you see that is uh, so thank you daddy paul <laughs> so let me read what my darling husband says mr paul says um amina can you mute please for a bit thank you mr paul says thank you sister amina Ladies, don't expect your partners to be magicians, but let them know what you're going through for a better understanding. What else can we say? Thank you so much, Mr. Paul Tinzo. Thank you so much for this. And I think you're speaking, representing all the hoods, like Rebecca says. Thank you, Daddy Paul, for representing your hoods. And do share with your friends, do share with your guys, do share with other men and tell them that there is a part two coming up and they need to be on board, right? You need to get them on board. All right. 
Amina, I think that we, this is exactly 10 p.m., 11 p.m., we've been on for one hour. So do you have something to round up before we leave? Don't forget to unmute yourself. Let me mute. Hi, um, Laura, I think you were repeating, everything that you were saying was being repeated. So I, I hope I'm not having the same problem. So, Hi, um, Laura, I think, yeah so all i can say is that thank you very much for everybody who's here obviously i can't see who's in the audience but i think this is a very important topic we need to talk about it more we need to be a little bit more forgiving of ourselves as women but also forgive those around us if we think somebody is going through a difficult time just talk to them don't be too judgmental because this is a natural part of life. It's not a very pleasant time to be in, but we can make it easier for ourselves and those around us by being supportive. And thank you, thank you to our husbands who are there, who understand, because they are the ones that will see the worst of it. But as long as they continue supporting us, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you. Thank you so much. There is the echo. Yours was also repeating. I don't know what's going on, but thank God it is coming at the end of the show. Um, so before we give the final prayer, I just want to thank everyone who took our time today to come and keep Amina and I company. And we know it's a bit of an ungodly time, but again, there is no perfect time for these things, right? So if it's important, we just make time for it, isn't it? And we do apologize for the background noise, for the echoing. I can't tell, we really can't tell why that happened, but um, we need to also know that life comes with lots of challenges. There is always a challenge um, on the way, so it's for, it's for us to decide, are we going to give up? Are we going to stop the show? Or are we going to say, hey, so long as someone can still hear and understand what I'm saying, we are going to move on with that. I'm happy that Amina stayed the course with us. We have really learned a lot, Amina. You've proven again what I said at the start of the show that you're very generous. I think everyone can confirm that all our audience, thank you so much for that. Dear audience, thank you all so much also for making the time to come and be with us. Thank you for your questions, which also you know, guided Amina to be able to to be able to, um, to, to, to give us the best, you know, and to, to give you what, what will really, really be of help to you. We're going to have a part two. I will get in touch with Amina. I will get in touch with Malaika. And if there is someone else, if you watch this show and you think you can be a part of, a part of that second edition, please get in touch with me so that we, we organize it. So I would just invite Amina to give us a short prayer a closing prayer, and then we read some of the last comments and we go away. Um, Laura, before I go, the echo is really bad, so I didn't hear what you said at the end. So would you mind repeating that? Okay, I was, I was just saying that you should just give us a short closing prayer so that we can round up. I can't hear. Okay. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay, dear Amina. So I think we'll just uh, close the show now. And um, thank you all so much again. God bless you all. Linda, thanks for coming. Thanks so much for being with us. And um, if you came at the end, you can watch the show from the beginning. Every other person, God bless you. We love you, Amina. We love you too. Thank you so very much. And keep the fire burning. Bye. Ciao.